Good morning, Colorado. You're listening to The Daily Sunup. The Daily Sunup podcast is a conversation with the Colorado Sun. See our trust indicators at coloradosun.com slash ethics. It's Wednesday, October 16th. Today, we're sharing an excerpt from our panel on polling at SunFest last month. Hear from the experts on the views of Colorado voters, as well as what you should watch for when interpreting poll results. Before we begin, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Pinnacle Assurance, Colorado's leading provider of workers' compensation insurance. Pinnacle provides caring protection that Colorado businesses can rely on as they expand across the country. From finance to robotics and Arizona to Orlando, Pinnacle's nationwide coverage goes wherever Colorado businesses grow. Now, let's go back in time with some Colorado history. During the Gilded Age, economic growth led to severe damage of natural resources through practices like clear-cutting. To curb this, Congress passed the Forest Reserve Act in 1891, allowing presidents to designate national forests. On this day in 1891, President Benjamin Harrison established Colorado's first national forest, the White River Plateau Timberland Reserve, covering parts of Eagle, Garfield, Moffat, Rio Blanco, and Route counties. Initially spanning 1.1 million acres, the reserve aimed to protect Rocky Mountain scenery and attract tourists. Despite opposition, fearing federal interference, the designation managed resource use sustainably. Over time, the reserve expanded to 2.3 million acres across eight counties and became the most visited national forest, hosting summer activities and renowned winter resorts like Aspen and Vale. Before we continue, AARP Colorado empowers older people to choose how they live as they age. From making Colorado communities more livable and age-friendly to supporting family caregivers, AARP Colorado is a wise friend and a fierce defender. Visit aarp.org slash co for more info. Next, back to our SunFest panel on the views of Colorado voters as well as what you should watch for when interpreting poll results. I'm Jesse Paul, uh, one of the politics reporters here at the Colorado Sun. Uh, Thank you for coming to our panel on polling, which uh, is the best part of politics in my mind. It's super interesting. And it tells you, I I am, as a reporter, I hate having to go stand outside uh, ballot boxes and ask people like, hey, you know, tell me your most intimate uh, information, in part because I think it is so um, unreliable in terms of, you know, what you're getting back, right? Because it's a depends on what time you go. In Colorado, a very small fraction of people actually vote in person. So, um, you know, you're, you're getting kind of a skewed sample. So polling comes into, uh, is a super handy tool in, in terms of actually gauging public opinion in a, uh, a way that's has some efficacy. Um, so I'm Jesse Paul. Uh, next to me is uh, Brian Eason, a fellow political reporter here at the, at the Color Sun. We've got Professor Seth Maskett. Uh, as the director of the Center on American Politics at the University of Denver. Um, so I want to introduce our, our panelists. We've got Kevin Ingham, uh, the principal and founder of Aspect Strat- Strategic, a Democratic polling firm here in Colorado. He's joined by Catherine Hahn, a director at New Bridge Strategy, a Republican polling and political firm here in Colorado. And um, we thought it'd be interesting to kick it off with a little presentation um, from Kevin and Catherine to kind of talk about some of the polling data they have and um Help, help set up our conversation. So toss it to you guys. So Kevin and I are here today uh, purely from uh, sort of an explanatory uh, standpoint. Uh, I left my crystal ball at home. I know Kevin did as well, too, because we called this morning uh, and talked about it. Um, so we will not be making any predictions uh, about the election here today. Uh, we're just hoping to provide you with some data um, and some really interesting uh, viewpoints from Colorado Colorado voters uh, across the state. We conducted a uh, survey in March uh, among 632 voters throughout the state. They were all likely to vote in the 2024 election. In March, we talked to voters about a wide variety of topics, uh, including the migrant crisis in Colorado, uh, the 2024 election, and uh, some ballot measures, uh, how they felt about past ballot measures. We also asked about their views um, about Colorado and about being a Coloradan. And I love starting out this question. I love starting out on a positive note. Um, a wide majority, a vast majority of voters in Colorado are proud to be a Coloradan. Uh, in fact, four in five, uh, over 84% say that they strongly agree with the statement they're proud to be a Coloradan. And we have a majority saying that they strongly agree. 
Um, and in this case, this data makes uh, my pollster heart very happy um, because uh, everyone said this. Why, all, the, all of our major key subgroups uh, told us they were proud to be a Coloradan. So um, voters from every age group, every gender, um, every gender, uh, party affiliation as well, whether they were Republican or a Democrat, they felt like they were proud to be a Coloradan. Now we're going to look at what they are thinking about when it comes to the 2024 election and their expectations for it. We'll start with expectations. And you don't need to be a DU poli sci professor to know that the politics in Colorado have changed dramatically over the last 15 years. And voters have noticed this as well. So in 2008, the Rocky Mountain News and News 4 conducted a survey where they asked voters, is Colorado a red state? a blue state, or somewhere in between. And back then, 60% thought that we had a more purple hue than a red or a blue one. But the times have changed. This year, we asked voters that exact same question, and only a third told us that they think that Colorado is a purple state. In fact, over 60% now believe that we are a blue state. And nobody seems to have noticed this more than Republicans, because Three quarters of Republicans in the survey told us that Colorado is now a blue state compared to two thirds of Democrats and 55 percent of unaffiliated voters. Now, despite this, despite Coloradans expectations about how the state is going to vote, there might be some Republicans out there that actually feel encouraged that there's there's some optimism that they might be able to notch some wins here in Colorado down ballot. And that's because Coloradans know who is in charge and they are grumpy. You can go ahead and go to the next slide. So we asked that age old question, are you better off than you were four years ago? Are you worse off or are things not changed for you? And a majority of voters told us that they are worse off today than they were four years ago. Now, usually when voters have that on their minds when they're going into the ballot box or here in Colorado when they're opening up their mail ballot, that usually bodes very poorly for the incumbent party. But in some ways, we are living in a historical times. Now, we have not asked the presidential race here in Colorado since there has been the shakeup at the top of the ticket. But twice over the last year, we have asked voters about the Biden and Trump matchup. In November of 2023, a little less than a year ago, Biden was leading Trump by nine points. We asked this again in a statewide survey in March, and Biden was leading Trump by 10 points. Now, if that had been the outcome, it would simultaneously be, yes, a smaller margin than what we saw Biden win by in Colorado in 2020, but it also would have been a landslide. And these are the exact same voters that tell us that they are doing worse today than they were at the beginning of Joe Biden's term. I want to ask you guys some questions. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about a lot of things in this panel. But first, I wanted to talk about um, just how, you know, Voters are, the vibes are bad among Colorado voters, right? That's kind of the way I would put it. I wonder how you, you know, advise your clients when, when you have numbers like that. Like, what does that translate to in terms of a campaign, A, and B, as like a reporter and member of the public, how am I to interpret that information? Like, if Colorado, Coloradans are feeling just as good about the direction as they are bad, like, what is, what, what, what can you kind of infer from that? Previous surveys was that the voters who tell us that the state is heading in the wrong direction their top issue is cost of living. And we do surveys in Denver as well. And just so you guys know, when we ask Denver voters, are things in the right direction or the wrong track here in Denver? It's also evenly divided. And I, we look at a whole bunch of different cross tabs, right? Um, we look by political party, by gender, by age, what have you. But one thing that we've always really found interesting is looking at how long you've lived in Colorado. If you look at those voters that are new to Colorado, say within the last five years, they love Colorado. They think it's great here, right? Because compared to where they came from, it is great here. But then if you look at the voters who have been here 20 years or longer or are natives, they've seen their, chain, their state change a lot. In fact, when we asked voters whether they agree, uh, sorry, agree or disagree with the statement, Colorado has changed so much, I sometimes feel like a stranger in my own state. 58% say that they agree with that statement. So there is a lot of divides that are happening underneath the surface, but a lot of what is happening here is a reaction to change. In fact, if you talk to a voter in Denver that's been here for a long time, they'll say, it's always been a big city, but now we have big city problems. 
problems. And that feels different than where it was before. So you're asking, how do I advise client? Well, I think it depends. Are you the incumbent or are you the challenger? Because if you are the incumbent, you have to recognize that. You have to recognize that people are feeling financially pressured, that they feel like they can't get ahead even if they work hard and play by the rules. And you have to acknowledge that you are in office and that there's more work to do. You can't just take a victory lap. If you're the challenger, well, you just hang all the problems around the neck of the person who is currently in office. I remember all these polls came out where everyone was like, I feel terrible about Colorado ahead of the 22 election. The Republicans were like, we're, we got this. We're going to win. And that did not go well. So like, should there be an inference made, I guess, between those feelings and like shaking up the status quo? Or is it is it more complicated than that? Uh, Republicans in particular, uh, Kevin mentioned that question about I feel like a stranger in my own state. Uh, Republicans overwhelmingly, 85 percent say they feel like they're a stranger in their own state. Um, they also feel as though we did some other polling, uh, the Colorado Pulse poll for the uh, Health Foundation. Uh, and Republicans are also more likely to feel um, as though their politics, their political views um, contribute to a sense of not feeling as though they belong um, in the state. So I certainly feel, you know, I can certainly say and point to data that, um, you know, there is a sense uh, among Republicans that things are different. Uh, we saw the data about um, Colorado, Colorado's changing status um, from a purple state to a blue state. Uh, and I think, you know, that's certainly present. Um, but, you know, pe- the folks who are moving here are identifying as independent and it's not really helping out Republicans um, at all. Fascinating. Okay, I'm going to ask one more general question. I want to pitch this to Kathy. Um, basically, we get a lot of polling information these days. We see it written up in the newspapers. A new poll comes out immediately. There's some people trashing it and saying, well, they didn't poll these folks. Or, Can you give us an idea, just sort of generally speaking, um, what should we be looking for? Like, what makes for a good poll? What's a red flag that should warn us it's not representative? What, like, what some some tips for those of us who like to follow this? Yeah, sure. That's a great question. So um, for statewide polling, we normally look for a sample size of, size of at least 500 to 600. Um, I would look to see how the survey was conducted in terms of whether it was conducted online, uh, via text to web, um, whether on the phones. Um, of course, phones used to be the gold standard. Um, and now we're doing more mixed mode. So if you see something that's like online and phone, that's very legitimate. Um, we do this, we do that at CPI. Um, I would look for, you know, any type of question wording that maybe seems a little loaded to you. Um, you'll know what I mean when you read it. Um, it's like, do you like dogs? Uh, yes, I like dogs. No, I like to kill puppies. Like it's not, you know, it's not that hard. Um, you know, it's pretty clear, you know, which way some questions are leading. Um, always look at the source as well. Um, You know, of course, a Fox News poll is going to have, you know, a little bit of a slant versus a CNN poll. Um, So just know where the data is coming from. Um, Look at the methodology. um, Take a look at the margin of error. um, You know, look at the audience uh, interviewed as well. So in this case, we were reporting on uh, 2024, uh, the 2024 election. So we spoke to likely 2024 voters. um, And I think that pretty much sums it up. Did I miss anything? Uh, David, when he started CPI, insisted on transparency, said, we want to release all of it. We don't want to, we have nothing to hide here. And so Catherine made reference earlier that all of our questions, the exact way that we ask them in the order that we ask them are posted on our websites. We also release the full crosstab so that you guys can go through and see for yourselves. I'm not saying that if a pollster is transparent, that it means that it is a good poll or that if you're not getting all the information is a bad poll, but it is one more thing that you should sort of put into your mind when you're thinking about this. Are they being transparent? Will they answer the questions about the way that they're doing this? And can I go and look at it for myself or am I sort of getting it through a keyhole where I can only see a little bit of what is being presented to me? So I guess along those lines as a journalist, something that I struggle with sometimes is, you know, if I look at a poll, you know, and and it's recent the survey size seems good the pollster has like a relatively good reputation but the numbers are crazy <laughs> so for example um to use a anonymous situation a certain republican congresswoman from colorado who's running in a district that's 27 points republican and that and one of the democratic candidates says hey i'm winning by 10 points in this poll that to me that's where i struggle and i wonder how you would recommend me and the public would interpret that um 
that that doesn't seem plausible, but it checks the boxes on all those other things. So how how do you recommend kind of digging into that data? Yeah. So um, as a pollster, the first thing I would do is look at the demographics. Um, I would look to see how they weighted the data, um, make sure that party affiliation is correct. Um, and, you know, according to uh, what we're seeing in the state. So as a pollster, that's the first thing I would do. Um, as you know, a regular citizen, I think you just have to keep, you know, your wits about you and you have to be smart. Um, and it's, it's really, you know, buyer's choice, right? Um, I talk to people all the time who tell me about these crazy poll result, poll results. And I'm like, well, let's go through the methodology. Let's look at the demographics. You know, you do have to be really careful. I don't think that that's rare, to be honest with you. Um, there are a lot of pollsters out there. Uh, not all of them are as good as Kevin is. Finally, here are a few stories that you should know about today. Colorado Parks and Wildlife is preparing to clear thousands of flooded cottonwood trees from Chatfield Reservoir southwest of Denver to keep dam outlets from clogging. Fans of the much-visited lake at Chatfield State Park will see nearly 3,000 trees, with their bases now underwater, cut down and trucked away in coming months. Rising water levels in the past couple of years have killed masses of cottonwoods and willows that previously offered shade above the waterline. A nonpartisan analysis shows U.S. Representative Yadira Carabeo has one of the highest rates of staff turnover in Congress. The nonpartisan legislative tracker Legistorm determined that Carabeo had the 54th highest staff turnover among 428 representatives in the chamber. Among departing staff members are a number of top aides to the first-term Thornton Democrat. The high turnover raises questions about her management of her staff. Carabeo faces a stiff re-election challenge in the 8th Congressional District from Republican Gabe Evans. A subsidiary of Colorado-based Ball Corporation has agreed to settle an employment discrimination case involving 192 black applicants for a high-paying job. Ball Container is part of the same Westminster company known for making aluminum beverage containers. The U.S. Department of Labor found, quote, statistically significant differences in the company's hiring rates of black applicants for a technician job compared with whites from 2020 to 2022. Ball Container agreed to pay $309,000 in back wages and interest and provide job offers to eligible applicants. For more information on all of these stories, visit our website, coloradosun.com. And don't forget to tune in again next time. Now a quick message from our team. Hi, I'm Tamara Chung, and I write about business and technology for the Colorado Sun. A large part of my beat is the Colorado economy and covering the ups and downs of losing a job, finding a job, running a business, all that fun stuff. You'll find coverage every Saturday in What's Working, and it's free because we feel all Coloradans need to know this stuff in order to stay better informed. You know, that's how we roll here, by the way. And that's why we'd appreciate your support to help keep the Colorado Sun sustainable. If you'd like to become a member, you can just go to coloradosun.com slash join today. Thanks.